graphing tangent and cotangent functions. Since we don't have words like amplitude and midline with tangent and cotangent, we're going to have to think more in terms of shifting and stretching. Let's take a look at this first example, y equals negative tangent pi over 4x minus 1. Well, we have, of course, our regular tangent shape, but that negative in the front, we know what that does. That would create a reflected tangent shape. In other words, the regular tangent shape would flip across the x-axis, resulting in a picture looking like this. The interesting thing about that, of course, is that it kind of looks like a cotangent shape now. That's true, but the asymptotes don't match the cotangent function. The asymptotes are between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, just like for the regular tangent function. So ultimately, that's the picture we're about to draw. Vertical shift, well, that's the minus 1 at the end. This entire picture will be shifted down one unit. How about period? Do we have a change there? Absolutely, because we have a b number, a, a multiplying number by the x. How do we find the period? Well, remember, for tangent and cotangent, our little formula is just p equals pi divided by the b. The normal period of tangent is pi, and so that's why that number is in the formula. This would be pi divided by pi over 4. In other words, pi times 4 over pi, which of course is just going to end up being 4. So the period of this function is 4. Now let me explain how this works because it's a little tricky. Technically what's going on here when you have this multiplying number is a horizontal stretch or compress. When that happens, the y-axis remains fixed in place and everything else stretches or compresses from there. Now we know that the current period of the regular tangent function is pi. We want the new period to be 4. Pi is about 3.14, so 4 is bigger. It's going to stretch out a little bit from the y-axis equally in both directions. Right now we have pi over 2 of it on the left and pi over 2 on the right. We're going to stretch this out so that the total distance now is 4. Well, that would mean two units to the left and two units to the right. So the asymptotes that used to be at negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 will now be at negative 2 and 2. I need to move them equally so that the total distance between them is 4. Okay, I've marked some scale onto the x-axis. Our job is to graph two complete periods of this function. So we'll, we'll take the first one and then we'll just copy it. We've already determined that we have vertical asymptotes at negative 2 and 2. In between those, we will draw one complete cycle, essentially the transformation of the fundamental cycle. We know we're going to be drawing this basic shape. We've already fixed the asymptotes. The only other issue is that the whole picture is shifted down by 1. So let's think about that. We should have a spot here at 0, 0, but that point is going to go down to 0, negative 1. And then we mark those two middle spots, right? We should have a middle spot here up at 1 is how the regular tangent function works. Well, if I drop that, that means the middle spot would be here at 0, so negative 1, 0. How about the other middle spot? Halfway between 0 and 2 is 1 on the x-axis. Well, that's supposed to be down here at negative 1, but it's going to go down another spot. It'll be at negative 2. Do you see how the whole shape is being moved down one unit? All that's left is to draw in that familiar tangent shape. I need to make it curved, and I need to make it look like it's approaching the vertical asymptotes at the ends. And we've done it. Let's see, we can quickly add on that second period. The period of this thing is 4, which means my next asymptote must happen at 6, 2 plus 4. And then I'm essentially just copying this picture. I've already decided that the point in the middle goes down to the negative 1. The other spots, this one was at negative 2. This one here was at the x-axis. And again, just draw in the shape. And we've got our graph. As far as the asymptotes, we've done this several times now. They are vertical lines. The simplest one looks to be at positive 2. And then we add multiples of the distance between, which of course is 4. 
the simplest way to write this would be 2 plus 4k. Well, let's look at one more example. Now we have y equals negative 2 cotangent of x minus pi over 4. We'll use some of those same strategies. So what is our starting shape? Well, I know what cotangent looks like. Of course, that negative means that I need to deal with reflected cotangent. Cotangent is the one whose fundamental cycle goes between 0 and pi. Since it's reflected across the x-axis, instead of going downward from left to right, it'll go upward from left to right, meaning it'll more resemble the typical tangent shape. There is a vertical stretch this time because of the multiplying 2 on the outside, so all of our y values will double. There is a phase shift as well because of that inner parentheses. Let's see, the phase shift is always the opposite of what I see. I see a negative, but I know the phase shift will be a positive pi over 4, meaning pi over 4 to the right. Let's see, where will my new asymptotes be? Well, let's see, in this particular one, the period is not changing. There's no multiplying number in front of the x, so the period is still staying at pi. Why would the asymptotes even change then? Only because of the phase shift. So nothing needs to be stretched horizontally, but every single point on this graph is going to move pi over 4 to the right. So the asymptote that used to be at 0 is now going to be at pi over 4. And the asymptote that used to be at pi, I'm going to have to add pi over 4 to that to figure out where it is now. Let's see, I'll get a common denominator. I'll have 4 pi over 4 plus 1 pi over 4. Looks like 5 pi over 4. So at least for that first cycle, that's where my asymptotes will be. The new first x-intercept, that's probably worth writing down. Where was the old x-intercept? It's right here, and it's halfway into that cycle, which means, of course, it's pi over 2. Well, that point is also going to get shifted over pi over 4 to the right. And so if I add a pi over 4 to pi over 2, I'll know where it goes. Let's see, i got to multiply this one by 2 over 2. That gives me 2 pi over 4 plus pi over 4. That's going to come out to be 3 pi over 4. These are the sorts of things that are helpful for you to write down, and it makes the graphing a lot easier. OK, so let's show some scaling on our x-axis. OK, so I counted by pi over 4s. I knew I needed to at least get out to 5 pi over 4. We've already decided that the asymptotes are right here at pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. We've decided that there's an x-intercept here at 3 pi over 4. That's that middle spot. We figured that out already. Let's mark the other two key points. Remember, I know that this is the shape I'm about to draw, and I know how this function works. Normally, the first middle point, the one that's here at pi, would be up at 1. But I do have that vertical stretch. Everybody's being stretched out a little bit, so double that. It's going to be up here at 2. And usually, the other one is down at negative 1. Well, when I double that, that's also going to pull it down to negative 2. This is going to be a little bit of a steeper version of the cotangent function and then draw in the, the typical curve. And so we've got our first cycle. We can always add the second one on very quickly. I'll still need to count by pi over fours. Let's see, it took me four tick marks before, so it'll be the same thing now. Maybe we'll just mark that last one. We were at five pi over four, so six, seven, eight, nine pi over four to get to here. I know there's an asymptote there. I know the x-intercept is right in the middle. I know the other two key points. There's going to be one up at 2 and one down at negative 2. And then draw the curve in, and we're done. And so there's two periods of that function shown. As far as the asymptotes, let's see. The first one is there at pi over 4. And the distance between them is pi. Remember, the period didn't change in this problem, so multiples of pi x equals pi over 4 plus k pi. As always, we can check these problems on the graphing calculator. Let's see, I'll have to type this in negative 2 and then divided by tangent of the parentheses. And then I'll try to match the window we had on the paper. We went from about 0 to 9 pi over 4. And we were counting by pi over 4. 
And then on the y-axis, I think what this says looks good, negative 4 to 4, counting by 1s, that seems about right. And I'll hit graph. And of course the asymptotes are missing, but everything else looks just like we had it on the paper. Here's that first asymptote at pi over 4. Here's that first x-intercept at 3 pi over 4. Here's the next asymptote, and so on. Let's see, one of the points we had on our graph was pi comma 2. I can check that as well. Go to trace, hit pi, hit enter. Sure enough, there it is, pi comma 2. Our graph is verified. Thanks for watching.